One of the great Ryan Sandberg games. Uh, that was in 84 in June against Suter and the Cardinals. The uh, 84 Cubs, of course, were very good. Rhino was tremendous. Uh, they won 96, lost to San Diego in the postseason in that five-game series. It's going to be a statue now of Ryan with the great Cubby, Sano, Banks, Billy Williams, people like that. And that's going to be in 2024. The Hall of Fame second baseman says hello. Ryan, nice to talk. And that is a heck of a game. You know, it's funny. You had a lot of great games. But everybody remembers that one. Costas, Kubek, NBC. That game goes yeah. down in history as far as you are concerned and the Cubs. How about that for a sec? Let me hear. Changed my whole career in one game. Uh, took my uh, expectations as a player to a whole nother level. And I think the fans as well. But, uh, yeah, a, a Saturday game of the week. Everybody watching. Uh, I believe we're a half a game out of first place at the start of that game. And with that win, uh, really, I think it uh, really sent a message to our ball club that maybe we, we had something special here and we were in first place and we didn't give it up the rest of the year. Uh, but as far as... Uh, one game changing a career. Uh, I, I don't think I'd, I'd be a Hall of Famer or have a statue if it wasn't for the, the, the catapult of that one game facing Bruce Souter. And that was the big thing about it. A dominant ground ball pitcher being able to elevate two pitches for home runs. Uh, you didn't see that off of Bruce. 100% right. Uh, he, of course, 82, closed it for the Cardinals when they won a championship. You were 36 and 31, a game and a half back, and you won 96 games that year, Ryan. You had a heck of a season. And, you know, you were on two great Cub teams. You know, you had a great career there, and you had the two cracks, the five games against San Diego, and you had the Giants. That was a great series, a lot of close games, and you could have won that, too, on a great Cub team in 89 with Dawson and folks like that. Talk about those yeah. two great Cub teams that you anchored. Go ahead. Yeah, so 84, that was my third year in the major leagues, and a big, a huge trade at the end of spring training for Gary Matthews and Bob Dernier from the Phillies. Uh, Bob Dernier, I played in with the minor leagues. Uh, he slotted into the leadoff spot. It's good speed there. Gary Matthews, the Sarge, batting behind me third. RBI guy, Leon Durham. Um, Ron Say, at that point, coming over from the Dodgers. Uh, uh, Jody Davis, Keith Moreland, uh, Boa, of course. But uh, that team was built. Uh, I was the youngest one on the club by far. So that that team was pretty much put together by Dallas Green with a very short uh, two-year window of maybe 84, 85, we got out of the shoot and was in first place uh, in June. And then all of our five starting pitchers went on the DL at the same time, and we fell off in 85. And then they started to break up the team because of the, the veteran players that we had. 89 uh, was a more of a veteran player, along with the uh, mainstays, uh, uh, Scott Sanderson and Rick Sutcliffe uh, from the 84 team. Add Andre Dawson to that. And then a new core group of young players, Mark Grace, Joe Girardi, uh, Greg Maddox, Jerome Walton, Dwight Smith, Mike Bilecki. These guys were the new young core group, and I was just a veteran amongst youngsters. Loved that team. Don Zimmer was the manager. And Zim, everything that Zim tried that year worked. Uh, I even saw a bases loaded hit and run at Shea Stadium with Manny Trio up at the plate uh, on a full two right. count. It was it wasn't a hit and run. It was a full count, bases loaded, one out, send the runners. And then uh, Zim had trust in uh, Manny Trio, a uh, huge contact guy to put the ball in play. And I think it was the ball four, walked in a run. But everything that Zim tried worked. Uh, it was a good bunch of young guys. And we fell short, like you mentioned, to the uh, to the Giants in uh, postseason. But, boy, would I have liked to have had that 84 uh, team win one more game in San Diego, best of five series, and go and play the Tigers, uh, two old franchises like that. That would have been incredible. And I think the Cubs could have beaten Detroit, and that was that wonderful Detroit team. Remember, folks, this is important. 84 is the last of the five-game series. And remember, because the next year they went to best of seven in the NLCS. And also remember, uh, the Cubs had a better record than San Diego, but did not get home field. It was 2-3. So you had to play Correct. the last three games in San Diego, Ryan. If it was the way it is now, 2-2-1. Two, two, and one. After Garvey tied the series up in game four, if the game was back in Chicago for the fifth game, you would have won the penalty that year i'm sure you've thought about it go ahead they, let me hear it, it and the reason being they said was that because we didn't have lights we we're the only stadium at that in 84 without lights so prime time tv uh advertising more people could watch obviously at, at night 
uh, one of the games was taken away. And uh, what a difference that made. I mean, we uh, we beat them pretty badly in the first two games. I took a flight to San Diego and uh, three very exciting tight games. We came on the short end of all three of those and came up short. But yeah, the very next year going to the some seven game series. Thought about that. Uh, Steve Trout only got to pitch uh, one of those games in the five game series. He won game two pretty handily. He only had one shot at it. And uh, I think our starting pitching would have really done well in a seven game series. 100%. Ryan, you tried managing. You did it in the minor leagues for a long time, obviously, with the Phils, too. Um, you know, tricky to manage with a great Hall of Famer like you were. Give me some thoughts on that career for a sec. Go ahead. I uh, loved it. Six years in the minor leagues, starting from A ball in Peoria. I worked my way up to AAA, Des Moines, Iowa, and then Lehigh Valley for two years with the Phillies. Uh, really learned about the game and appreciated the game from all levels, from the front office to scouting to uh, – the general managers, uh, to all the positions on the field. I, I, I really, really got a lot out of that. I enjoyed the young players. I uh, was able to uh, be the third base coach under Charlie Manuel, which was an outstanding opportunity. Charlie, one of the best guys in baseball, in my opinion. He was awesome. He was a winner in Philadelphia. And then when they made a, 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 a change there, and I got a chance to manage the Phillies for two years, uh, it, uh, the cards just weren't set up uh, uh, for wins. We were actually projected th those two spring trainings to finish last in our division those two years, uh, which we accomplished. So uh, I kind of got that <laughs> up my chest. Uh, no more managing for me. I'm enjoying my ambassador role with the Cubs. And when I left the Phillies in June, I uh, rejoined uh, the Cubbies thanks to Tom Ricketts and Theo Epstein and Joe Madden, and they uh, welcomed me right aboard, and I was there for the whole 16 uh, World Series run for the Cubs, got a World Series ring out of that, being an ambassador and a Hall of Famer of the team. So uh, there's no looking back there, and I'm still remaining in that role with the Cubs as they they try and rebuild and go with a new core group and young players. Uh, I think they have one of the top five uh, minor league systems in all of baseball, so that's a good thing. So uh, I think another – uh, postseason run is right around the corner for the Cubs. 82 was Robin Yauch here. 84 is Ryan Sandberg, your Hall of Famer. Nice to talk there, Ryan. Keep up the good work. We'll get you again. Appreciate you coming Sound on here. Hey, sounds good. Love your show always. Good job.